Hi, I'm Tim Holcomb from Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly at tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing the first and only Patek Philippe 5170. This is the 5170P001, launched in 2017 and made for two model years before it was discontinued. The watch is 39.4 millimeters in diameter and platinum. It is 11.1 millimeters thick. It is 47 millimeters from lug to lug and it has a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw it on my wrist which is 16 centimeters in circumference and you can see it is a handsome timepiece. It's not petite but nor is it large. The timepiece would be suitable for a man or a woman. I could see this watch wearing well on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference and it easily tucks underneath the cuff. The watch is fitted to a large rectangular scale, black gloss, monotone stitch, alligator leather strap. You can see it features a folded edge. It's calfskin on the bottom, a conventional calfskin here. And you can see it is a Patek Philippe factory strap in very good shape. We have a Patek Philippe buckle here. It is the single fold polished Calatrava cross. And it too is made of platinum. With Patek Philippe, you get platinum to match platinum. Some brands will give you white gold clasps on a platinum watch. That doesn't happen here. And you know it's platinum because we have the diamond, the top Vesselton diamond between the lugs, the signature of a platinum case at Patek Philippe. You can see that the case band, rather Calatrava-like with blended lugs, it's all of high polish. We have a little bit of an inward step of the bezel, which has a vertical portion and then a very shallow conical slope up to the sapphire. We have rectangular heritage and Inspired pushers and a sharply knurled crown with a Calatrava cross on the outside. The dial is the most appealing part of this watch. The movement is compelling, but the dial is really what sets this apart from the other 5170s. It is a blue metallic sunburst that has a gradient to it, so a little bit like a 5711. It's blue silver at the center, and then it fades to navy blue at the outer edge. It's very dark, almost black. You can see we have a white on blue print for the tachymeter scale out board, which can be used to gauge the speed of an object, such as a race car over a kilometer. And then the other feature alongside the gradient blue is the use of diamond indices for the hours, which is wonderfully subtle, upscale, and downright appealing. And this is coming from someone who doesn't love of gems on watches. Now you can see we have two sunken sub-registers for constant seconds and chronograph minutes. We do have instantaneous jump in chronograph minutes, and you can see that we also have hacking seconds. Now the watch does feature some luminescence, and we're going to showcase that right here. You can see the hour and minute hand are luminescent. We'll flip the watch over. We can see caliber CH29535 Petite Second. It is a manual wind, 65 hour movement, free sprung, adjusted in six positions. It has a gyromax style free sprung balance, a handmade Breguet overcoil for concentric breathing and thus even timekeeping in every position. It features a black polished and capped column wheel and a lateral clutch. And you can see there are little golden chiton holding the fully jeweled uh, pivots of the lateral clutch. At Patek Philippe, you actually have higher level watchmakers working on the lateral clutches and more entry-level watchmakers work on the vertical clutches. So while vertical clutches are, quote, more efficient, they're not more beautiful and they're simpler to tune and assemble, which is why the traditional chronographs at Patek always use lateral chronographs. Lateral clutch chronos right here along with the capped column wheel. There was a reason traditionally for the capped column wheel, not just because it's beautiful, but because under conditions of impact, the horns of the levers couldn't actually jump out of the crenellated towers of the column wheel. Here you can see the pulled jumper system of the minutes display. So it's a Paul based jumper and you'll see it jump every minute. All of this beaten away at 28,800 vibrations per hour and water resistant down to 30 meters. The finishing is exquisite. You can see it to good advantage from several different angles. And I should mention that the feel of the column wheel chronograph here is outstanding. Reach out to Team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.